Hello everyone. So the other day I was feeling a bit inspired with my making uh, loops of techno over and over again. I felt like they all sounded the same and I wanted to do something a bit different. I wanted to make a change and maybe tune my oscillators for once. So that's what I did. Tuned them into a chord and ended up making a little dub techno tune, which was really fun and enjoyable to make. And I thought that maybe it would be fun to just show the process of making a dub techno tune with a modular, which admittedly is not the tool the best suited for the job. If you have a polysynth at home, just maybe use that, that's going to be quicker. But in reality, once you've tuned the chords, which really doesn't take that long, you have all the sequencing and modulation power of the modular to play with and just modulate that chord which is fun also it pretty much ties the whole of your patch cables and the whole of the modular just for one sound but it's an important sound if we're talking top techno of course it's not going to be the same track because i've unpatched everything but we can start again from scratch and see where that leads us the first thing to do is to make a chord i've uh, tune my oscillators, I'm using both oscillators in the complex oscillators completely separately as if there were two different oscillators. And uh, the harmonic oscillators is providing the third waveform. So I'm using a soul, a square and another soul. All you have to do really is just uh, put a tuner on uh, your channel. So let's do that. Uh, I'm not gonna let you hear the tuning process Here's the first waveform, which is an E. More or less. Then a G. More or less again. Then a B. More or less again. And uh, that's an E minor chord, according to my little sheet of paper here because I have absolutely zero knowledge of chords or music theory in general. So that's our three notes. Here's the chord. Nice, isn't it? Now is the fun part. We're gonna just play with this. So instead of going from my scan and pan straight into my interface, which isn't particularly interesting. Let's uh, plug it into the output of LXD and plug the output of my scanning pan into the LXD. So when it comes to sequencing, I'm going to use the voltage multistage. Um, what we're going to do mostly is offset the chord, not really do inversions or progressions. Uh, to do that, you would need a much, much more complicated module or sequencer to individually offset each and every oscillator. So here, what we're just going to do is molt the voltage to every volt per octave input. First, I'm going to put the CVA into an attenuator because I don't want the full 10 volts range of the voltage multistage. Then I'm taking this and going through a buff mold, which is at the far end of my case. And the buff mold is gonna send the same voltage to all three oscillators. Now we also need to set gate out to the gate in of my multi envelope and send that envelope to the CV input of LXD. And now we should get some sound. Of course, any idea of keeping stuff in tune is 
very far from my mind here because this is completely unquantized. We've attenuated down the line, so once again, it's a completely random amount. But by ear, I'm sure we can find something that works. Let's, uh, yeah, we can do this, for example. Uh, another thing we can do, if we're feeling fancy, is to run the voltage through the slew first. Gives it a bit of a bouncy feeling, which I would like. Then of course, the effects are going to be all important here. We can first add a bit of a L capstan tape delay. And it's lovely spring reverb. Then we can add some reverb as well. Maybe not that one. Let's add some convolution reverb. Something small like this. Maybe we don't need the slew for now. I think we could do with more delay actually. Something a bit lower, actually. I feel like it's starting to feel a bit dub techno y with the help of the Lala delay. But I think we could do more. Because this is very static right now, especially since I removed all of the pitch information. So let's go into the dual for both. And then into the LXD.
starting to sound quite nice. Another thing I think could be nice is to put the bark filter into the path. Since we're going to use the modular for basically just one sound, why not use it to its full capabilities? Just a, a random signal opening the frequency width and a clock telephone moving the center. It, it doesn't really need to be clocks. Might be better without clock. I think the Spark filter just gives this a vocal quality, almost vocoder like. The vocoder is something that's actually often used for duck deck tone chords. And here I think we can hear a bit why. Then it would be nice to maybe move more individual bands with Batumi. Especially since it's in quad mode, or actually phase mode. But I want to move this a bit further and maybe we can add some more random to an, our envelope. Something like this, maybe. with the compressor on the scanning pan. Maybe we can do that after. Let's uh, just try to add a background kick for now. I think a very short dry kick works well with dub techno. Let's use the one from the Tens Mouse.
tempo is 110 by the way. Then, I mean, you wanna play with the sands. Having a, a proper mixer would be ideal. I'm just doing this with my mouse. Sends to my H9. Adding a max MSP LFO to that sand would be nice, but you know, you I think it's best to do it top side really with the hand or we'll draw complicated animations if you like. One thing we could definitely add to our mix is white noise to the mix of oscillators to give some grit to everything and makes everything sound a bit more dub techno don't you think? okay so now that we have our chord I want to use Ableton to make a sort of atmosphere, something a bit more complex than just white noise to play in the background of that track. We'll probably just use white noise afterwards in a phaser or something. But right now I want to try to just mangle my chords to bring them completely elsewhere and make a sort of ambiency atmosphere. So to do that I've recorded a resample, so I've sent my chord as is, like this, to a chain full wet, and this is my chain is actually unfiltered audio silo, which is a granulator with a buffer here different parameters, a specializer, so it plays a bit in reverse, it plays wherever you like with different windows, and there's also a reverb at the end. So it's quite a complex plugin, but it's really excellent and I really tend to use it a lot now. Then I've used a phaser, phaser tan, which is nice as well, and dub techno needs phasers. Then just a compressor to keep things in check and an EQ to remove the low end because we're going to blend this with the chords. So here's our sound. Let's listen to it in solo. And I've also re-filtered it with a notch filter. You could use a bandpass actually also. Let's give it a little modulation, maybe. And a high pass at the end again. Just because I really don't want some low frequency in there. I think it makes for a nice background atmosphere. You can also just take your sample here and try to transpose it. I think it sounds maybe even better. It's always worth trying these options here. You have the envelopes here as well to transpose. You can transpose just parts or redesign envelopes in here. Ableton offers so many options. I never knew about before I really 
spent time and also had friends show it to me basically. Something I've uh, experimented with last time and I thought was really interesting is uh, just sending my chord to my expressor by Elysia and just going a bit crazy with the settings, crazily inverted ratios and uh, strange envelopes, lots of gain, just to impart a new rhythm to the chords and see how it reacts and just give it a lot of movement and it makes for a good light show. So let's just try a few knobs position and try to see what's good. <laughs> is at 50% so even if we go completely crazy like this it still retains some of the original it just creates this wonderful movement I also engage the GRL when the little yellow light hits it's basically a sign that says do not go further than say 12 or 15 dB of reduction Okay, so now we mentioned noise previously and I want to add a very thin layer of noise to that track just because dub techno is all about atmosphere and you can never have enough noise. We already have noise in our chord. We have that strange atmosphere we created with resampling. But let's just add a very thin layer of noise with the noise and filter. I'm gonna use the second output from the top. Going to Kaminiac. I want something that's really barely, barely there, but still, I want some noise. slow LFO. Let's keep the triangle wave just phasing away. We're almost at the end of a video now. screen I've also added a couple of modulation to my main envelope. There's a clock divider triggering function here. The function is sent to one of the inputs of the multi envelope. So it creates a bit more dynamics again. It's all about dynamics of this chorus with the modulation, with the compressor we just saw. Make them dance around. Now 
now it's night time. And we can just enjoy these dub chords. Last time also I did some toms as a, a sort of bass line. Usually dub techno would use something like a sine wave. But I don't feel like doing it here. I feel like these chords are enough. They're kind of low too. Here, these swells to create the compressor does because it's compressors going after the reverb and everything. So when it releases, there's there's a swell of reverb and effects, which in my book makes everything really dub. This video gave you a few ideas. If only to try new things on your modular. Maybe have a go with resampling and repitching and just using plugins to create atmospheres or use compressors creatively. one.